Hunter x Hunter, episode 15. Gone has gone fishing. This cute bird got exceptionally lucky. I don't know why it didn't occur to me the, the irony of that. Explosion X of X Deception. The fact that that's exactly what's happening to him right now. So gentle. Damn, that dedication. In two days. Unflinching focus. Follow the trail of blood. Don't trust the butterflies. Okay, Snow White. Oh. Oh, follow the butterflies. <laughs> That's such a great transition. How much blood does he have on his hands? Yeah, I feel like he would just take on everyone for fun. Actually, there's some parallels between Hisoka and Gon. Both of them are just having a great time, but for very different reasons and goals. Okay, that's why the butterflies are following him. I just assumed he had murdered people. He's dead now. Oh, he patched him up. Gon's adventures in the forest. Gon would enjoy a battle royale, or he would be unfazed by a battle royale. Oh, it's different actually seeing him in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows how you act in the real thing? Focus on the task. Or focus on your breathing. Focus on something else other than your panic. <laughs> oh no, I don't know why. Just... Leario, man, this should be good. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The two of them in a battle royale forest with no rules. Why are you still here? Tampa would know. He pays attention to everyone. Ponzo, you say, can you, uh, I know who he is, but could you describe him, maybe? Oh, the karma. Oh, the karma. He does have medicine in there, probably. Why would you ever distrust Tompa? Uh, of course. <laughs> oh, that's Ponzu. That's an amazingly accurate stick picture. You're in the woods, bro. Wow, I lost his tag already. Oh, it's Monkey Dude. Tompa! Damn, I fell for it, actually. I wonder if Tompa's goal would start to change the closer and closer he gets to actually becoming a hunter. It has to be one of two things, right? Either his actual motivation is trying to stop people from becoming hunters because he knows how terrible the job is or is against it or, or something. Or it's what I thought at face value, which is just that he's bitter because he can't pass. And if that's the case, he's so close to passing now, he might actually start to care and work hard. Imagine thinking that you can trust Tompa, no matter who you are. <laughs> Tompa, I think, specifically just likes taunting Leorio. Because he just makes it so easy. I mean, you can. <laughs> we have a higher priority now, just killing Tompa. I did it all for your sake. It was to teach you a lesson. The South Park Chicken episode comes to mind. Yeah, he had that coming. Team up. Team up. And Allegiance makes so much sense in this event. Yeah, there you go. They should never have split. Target. <laughs> Alright, thanks, Lirio. Maybe the tiger, the monkey gets it.
Does that mean Tomba's finally out? The guy's resourceful. I mean, if he put half the energy he puts into spoiling people's chances into just passing the exam and becoming a hunter, he would be one of the greatest hunters of all time. Looks like they worked him over a bit too. Oh, so he's good. He's done. Such an obvious target. <laughs> Prove everyone wrong. Well, I mean, he's done. It's up to Kurapika now at this point. Wow, that honor. That honor. Kurapika is golden, man. You know, it means a lot to me specifically, this kind of thing. I think you can tell a lot about a person based on how they treat codes of honor. It just seems like Kurapika takes it as obvious that because he and Leorio have a history, that he would help him, right? That would not necessarily be the case for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people I meet feel like they're friends or acquaintances of convenience. Ultimately, I think the larger game is your image of yourself looking in the proverbial mirror and liking what you see. That doesn't mean there isn't a very strong pull and maybe even an importance of following the material, having self-interested desires, whatever. And oftentimes you're put in a situation where following a code of honor means sacrificing that somewhat, right? Sacrificing short-term gain for yourself. And I really get that and I do feel the pull and I've given into it. And to make it even more sympathetic, oftentimes following a code of ethics or honor or whatever gives people who would take advantage an even greater advantage over you. So it can be frustrating, right? Like I want to follow a code of honor. I don't want to be underhanded, but there's sometimes a feeling feeling of regret, at least short term, when you take a higher road. And then in doing so, that gives an opportunity for someone to undercut you. And then, you know, you win sort of maybe a moral victory for yourself, which, you know, again, is higher value ultimately, more important. But it still stings, right? It stings when people can gain by not following the rules you're working so hard to upkeep. You know what area of life I often experience this in? How a lot of guys I meet act differently when they're with me alone versus when they're with me and suddenly there's a love interest. Just for example, a long time ago, you know, I meet people when I'm out and one night I was out alone and I struck up a conversation with the guy that was there and like we just hit it off. It was great. I thought, oh, this is someone that is cool and that maybe I can hang out with in the future or whatever. Later on, as we were bar hopping, we met a group of people, one of which was a girl with whom I struck up a conversation and started going really well. Next thing you know, this guy that up until that point I had liked started to badmouth me thinking I couldn't understand it. And it's kind of a sickening feeling when you see it. You know, it's startling because you realize what you've been looking at. Maybe there was something genuine about elements of it, but it was a mask hiding some real darkness underneath. And because I understand the depths of temptation of being just purely self-interested, and seeking to win at all costs. And because I know how common that approach is, it means so much to me when I meet someone else who's trying to live by a code. I mean, it just says so much about a person. It means they're, they're developed mentally, spiritually. It probably means, at least in the area you're currently experiencing it, they have real character strength. They have resources to spare, right? They're, they're confident. Kurapika could easily take his badges and walk, but he doesn't. <laughs> Also, Leorio got really lucky meeting this crew, for real. Kind of hard to imagine him passing otherwise, honestly speaking. Hilo just fits right at home, something about his ambiance. Perfect match for this haunted forest. No fear whatsoever. Yeah, he, he knows where everyone is. I feel bad for whoever picked Kalua, and they'll very likely underestimate him being Bart Simpson with a Gojo haircut. I'll be here when you're ready. Soka, very patient. Yeah, he would know too, right? Could be someone else, though. It's probably who's... The person who's following, Gon. Wait, 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 wait. Five seconds. Wait five seconds. One. <laughs> Two. Yeah, not even five seconds. He's not even the person following Gon. I Means there's four people here. No lies were told. Right, this is the moment he's after his prey. Hisoka definitely the hunter in this matchup. I like the boldness of just wearing these badges. It's such a statement. Here, take it from me if you want it. Maybe he wants to see what this guy can do. This guy's auditioning for his life right now. Oh, he's weak. Maybe you should, like, I don't know, tend to your wound? Oh, I see, he's a Viking. Not even worth my, my energy. <laughs> that classic line, but delivered from someone else.
Oh, he's crying. That's something like overkill, but okay. It's like Gunjack? Is that Gunjack's talent? Oh, so they're, oh they're, it's acupuncture. <笑>僕はちゃんと相手を選ぶ。どうでもいいやつに興味はない。今殺しちゃもったいない人だけ生かすわけ。ああ、いや、ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。ですね。